Hi everyone, it's Simon Keeling here at weatherweb.net and it is Tuesday the 4th of March. Thanks again for watching. Um, we've got um, some good information to come from the Sun uh, in the last couple of days. Now, uh, I don't mean the Sun newspaper, I mean uh, the Sun, as in the Sun that's in the sky. Um, I'll show you uh, that in just a second. Very interesting actually, the data that's come out on that. Um, but first of all, let's just uh, whiz through where we are in terms of the next few days weather. And it's high pressure is still the story really. Um, still looking at this gradual build of pressure uh, during the coming days. This is the chart for today. Um, low pressure off towards the uh, southwest just at the moment. You can see it here. Look, um, that's bringing some rain just across uh, the far southwestern parts of England during the course of this afternoon. But uh, the good news is that that's going to be gradually uh, clearing away. Um, for tomorrow, ridge of high pressure building in. So actually, we start to see uh, some pretty decent uh, temperatures uh, from tomorrow onwards. Um, what it does have is a, a moist southwesterly flow associated with it. So it'll bring some drizzle up these western coasts of the country during the course of Wednesday itself. But I think many eastern and central areas look as if they are going to stay fine right the way through out the course of the day. Thursday, yeah, still got high pressure off towards the south of the country on Thursday. You see the fronts there towards the uh, north zone. With that uh, southwesterly flow, that puts some pretty heavy rain across western parts of Scotland, northwest England, the north and the west of Wales as well. So uh, certainly some rainfall to come uh, during the course of Thursday. Friday, pretty similar really. Front still hanging around on Friday. Um, exact position of this is a little bit unclear, but it's somewhere northwest England into the uh, northwest of Wales, bringing some pretty heavy rain there. Still mild down towards the southwest, but I think cooler air getting into Scotland, and that could produce some outbreaks of snow during the course of the afternoon on Friday across Scotland as temperatures fall, but that snowfall taking place over high ground. Saturday sees high pressure off towards the east of the country, and then Sunday, a bit of a battle between high and low pressure. I don't think this is how it's going to look, really. I think the ridge is going to be more through here. Yes, that be a, a southerly flow associated with it. I think low pressure probably out here somewhere bringing rain to Western Ireland and to the west of Scotland but I think for most it's a dry and fine day on Sunday and certainly uh, a very warm one to come as well. Uh, now as far as the next few days go after that uh, we're looking at uh, something like this. This is the 7 to 10 day mean for the 500 millibar flow. ECM WF is on the left here and we got the GFS on the right here and uh, you notice both of them look the red colors here showing higher than normal heights um, on both models so good agreement between the models about these heights building and about high pressure getting in and building warmer dry conditions through the country uh, interesting to note look at this deep trough again here off the uh, northeastern coast of the states and off eastern Canada this again pumping in cold air from the pole, uh, getting into Newfoundland, some very cold air coming in there, although across um, more, I suppose you would say, more populated areas uh, of southern Canada and into the States, we've still got this milder southwesterly flow. Incidentally, it's just interesting when we look at these charts as well, just to consider what's going on with those uh, trough systems, because... Uh, look, you've got the smart southwesterly winds here meeting cold polar air coming in from here. And the meeting place between the two is where we get low pressure areas form. The jet stream is in there and it's within this zone here then that you get low pressure deepening. Uh, and that's where we get this biggest uh, gradient of temperature. So you can't even got cause and effect taking place there all the time. So um, that's the chart from next, uh, when I would Tuesday through to next Wednesday, which is the 14th. So showing this idea of pressure building, and it's certainly one that uh, is picked up as well by the uh, GFS ensembles. Um, and if we just look through the uh, ensemble here, this is from the weatherweb.net site. Uh, go on to GFS ensemble. This is the sort of thing it shows you. And uh, you'll notice here, look, this is the ridge that's building in here as we go through the coming days. So this is uh, the 6th. This When's that? Thursday. Um, and you'll notice as I just go through the next... 15 days look how that ridge just consistently comes back um, still got lower pressure out here towards the west and from time to time it just pushes those outbreaks of rain that we've just seen um, into more western areas but generally um, high pressure comes in the ridge just continues to build and in fact these are the charts uh, valid for the 12th so um, that's uh, next Wednesday so it's a week tomorrow and uh, you see high pressure firmly in control then and uh, with good agreement between the ECMWF and the GFS really 
you know, that looks like that's the way it's going to be. What the GFS Ensemble does try to do is get us back into a westerly. Now, what you have to bear in mind is that that's something that it always tries to do anyway. It always tries to bring back the westerly winds. But um, it has been pretty consistent in trying to do that. And uh, it does it by about the 15th, 16th of the month. You see here, look, pressure starting to fall. These westerly winds coming back in. So it's trying to say, well, look, boys, there's going to be, uh, and girls, there's going to be um, periods of rain getting back into Scotland around the 15th, 16th of the month and then as the uh, rest of the period progresses so we're going to find those slipping south as pressure falls and the jet stream strengthens again through Scotland but and it's the big but um, there um, I, I still think we're around this sort of date before we see a change I'm going to hold on to the dry milder stuff milder stuff for most of us perhaps not for central and northern Scotland but for most places I'm going to hold on to it until at least the 17th or the 18th and then a gradual deterioration from the north setting in after that and I, and I think what that could do and this is what I'm thinking of at the moment is it could lead us into a cool end of the month and my reasoning for it is I think what might try to happen is some of this cold air that's building up to the north here may dig south. Now, what that would do is it would just dig a trough in here and uh, eventually we'd find low pressure forming here across the uh, continent. What that would do, if you get low pressure in there at the end of the month, it would bring in more of an east to northeasterly flow. It would bring in cooler conditions um, by the time we got to that last third of the month so i think that's where we're going to uh, uh, that's my plan of action at the moment is to bring in more and settle weather at that end of the month so for the stuff that you've got to do that relies on springtime conditions i'll be saying come on let's try and get it done now before that risk sets in although i know that all of you now know that long range forecasting but it's a mugs game isn't it i can try and give you guidance so you've got to bear in mind that things could change, that forecast could change for the end of the month, but uh, I think at the moment I'm going to go through to the 18th and the 19th with the more settled conditions. Now I did say um, about the sun, interesting stuff coming out from the sun, and I've got this information from whatsupwiththat.com, great site, go and have a look at it, uh, some really good climate writing on there, it does lean into scepticism uh, more than... a positive attitude to, to climate change, but it's well worthwhile going in and having a look. Very interesting things put on there uh, and written by a reputable guy too. And what's interesting is that uh, we're in cycle 24 at the moment. It's what we call solar cycle 24. And uh, so this was solar cycle 23 back here. And uh, we've got the years going across the bottom here. Look, And what to notice, look, is that this was cycle 23. We came off that, went into a minimum around 2009, 2010. We've then picked up and it looks as if We've peaked at a maximum now in sunspot cycle 24. Look how much quieter it is. Sunspot numbers 125 here in 23. Um, but um, this one's been much quieter down at the 80s. And notice, look, we've now turned this corner. And this quiet period is forecast to set in now as we start to sink back into, uh, into a minimum period. So... You might think, well, uh, why is that important? Well, if I just show you this, this is a comparison of solar cycle 24 relative to the Dalton minimum. Now, the Dalton minimum is a well-known feature uh, that came in from uh, around 1790-ish, uh, uh, going up uh, through into the early 1800s. And it was a cold period, so it's a very cold period on Earth. Um, it's not uh, and, and, and it was almost like a mini period of intense cold weather. And this is a very clever chart because what it does, it compares the Dalton minimum solar cycle, which was solar cycle 5 here, and solar cycle 6. And what it does is it overlays solar cycle 24 to give us a comparison between what we're going through now and what the delta minimum was like. And you notice eerily how close together, look, the red and the blue lines are there in solar cycle 24. This one appears to have been um, a slightly stronger solar cycle. And certainly it seems as if it's broken the link here, look, during this latter stage with a double peak. But if you just look through into those blue colours, look, there was indications here of almost a double peak coming through. So it's not as quite a cycle as uh, cycle 20 as, as cycle 5 was but uh, it's still very very close and then what we saw was uh, a fall off in the cycle and it went very very quiet here look the sun almost went to sleep completely for about three years uh, between 18 well late part of 1808 
through to about 1811. And if we just go back and look at this time around, this is Solar Cycle 24 look, there's the prediction to take us down into these low, low levels. Now, as I say, it doesn't look as if it's going to be quite as quiet, um, but certainly uh, it looks as if the sun is, is trying to go to sleep. And the theory uh, goes at the moment that actually, um, uh, uh, sorry, I'll just show you this one first of all. Um, these are the solar cycles from 1749 to the predicted up to 2040. So there's, the, the, it's got various things marked on. Look, you see there the Dalton minimum. Look what happens, the dip there. Uh, so you can see how dramatic that is. Here's cycle, Solar Cycle 24, there's 23. And the comparison was to Solar Cycle 4 here, Solar Cycle 5 here. Uh, we've seen more of a, of a, of a drop there uh, during the Dalton Minimum one. Um, but still, you know, quite a drop going off. And the Sun forecast to go to sleep here uh, during Cycle 25, which will take us into... Um, the, uh, where are we, that's the one that we want, which will take us into the early part of the 2020s. So this forecast will be going colder. Now, um, what's said to, to happen as this happens is that it does coincide with a cold period in climate, which seems to be what happened here uh, during the course of the Dalton Minimum. Um, what many scientists are, are, are supposing at the moment is that the the oceans have acted as a, as a sink for heat, and that's why we're seeing this flattening off of, of temperatures. This is my famous elephant in the room of, of stabilised temperatures. But what they're saying is that um, that's almost this, this kind of storage of heat is mitigating or will mitigate the effects of what could be, again, a mini ice age. I mean, that sounds very dramatic, doesn't it? But what could be a very cold period here or what the earth's entering into at the moment so it could be that it's not as cold as it was back then because of the effects of climate change mitigating what's going on it could be that the earth is throwing us a lifeline to say actually this is uh, your chance to put things right now to, so that i can control the temperatures here a little bit more uh, to keep it a little bit warmer than it normally would be uh, you do your bit by you know, trying to reduce temperatures down. Of course, that's all on the basis that uh, climate change is in the way that it's said at the moment. But you'll notice from my recent writings, I think probably we're seeing some evidence of it now in the uh, severe weather that we've had, not this year, not last year, but over the past 20 years or so. In fact, a little bit more than that, probably 25 years. Um, so it's just interesting, isn't it, to see this, to see what the sun is currently up to and the fact that we've probably now peaked in our solar cycle so make the most of auroras because the sun could be going back to sleep again as we head into the coming years this is going to be a very interesting time now for the sun and for the predicted uh, solar cycles just to see how they match with the forecasts okay enough rabbiting on from me and um, hopefully you found that interesting i find it just fascinating to see uh, what's going on in the sun and its impact potentially on the climate but I'll leave you with that for now. Uh, just a reminder that we kept free of charge uh, by you coming back and using the site. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for telling your friends all about us. Um, it means we can put more adverts in front of you. So when you watch the videos, when you use the charts, etc., it means that we can do more. Um, if there's anything you want to see, any charts, anything that we're not showing at the moment, please do get in touch and let us know. But for now, whatever you're doing, have a great day. Keep the sun shining and uh, bye for now.